was yeah. mentioning the impact on young people. And in fact, uh, there are predictions that a million young people are predicted to be out of work by the time the furlough scheme comes to a close at the end of October. So the former Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, says the government risks failing a generation unless more action is taken to tackle youth unemployment. And Gordon Brown, I'm glad to say, joins us now from Fife. Uh, very good morning to you, and thank you again for being on the programme with us. Morning, this Dave. is really um, now emerging, isn't it, with the figures that you've come up with, that there could be a million young people. And I think, is that under 25s uh, that you particularly refer to, is it? Uh, that is... Um, that, that's right, Kate. Uh, in, and Ranveer here. I know you're lovely with Kate. It's just Ranveer here too. Uh, and, uh, but the, the point being, of course, that there is something very important that needs to be done that isn't being done for all those people. What mm. is your worry that will happen, say, 1st of November, you know, to all of those people who end up well, with I've... nothing? Yeah, Ranveer, I think parents are going to be worried sick about what's going to happen to their teenage sons and daughters who've left school, left college, and have nothing to do. Uh, and I think it grows right into the 20s, 21, 22, 23, 24, where jobs are simply not available. 60% of all redundancies since March have been amongst young people under 25. And we know we're facing a lost COVID generation as difficult a time as we had in the 1980s. Uh, when uh, you go for months, perhaps years, without the, your first real job, when you get rejection letter after rejection letter, and when there's desolation and desperation setting in, just as Prince William has rightly talked about this morning, the mental health problems that arrive. So we've got to do something immediately. We haven't done enough. The Prime Minister should get the regional mayors, he should get the first ministers in Scotland and Wales round a table, uh, online, if, uh, of course, uh, as it has to be, and they should discuss what they do now, because a million young people will have nothing to do at the start of November. There's only 120,000 places that can be provided immediately for young people on programmes that the government has developed. Uh, and, of course, we are facing the lockdowns and the quarantines, and that means that more young people will be out of work, particularly in the areas where they do work, which is the hospitality industry, tourism and so on, where they are going to be most affected by the numbers of lockdowns happening locally around the country. It's a, it's a terrifying prospect. It's a terrifying prospect for all generations, but I know you spoke on this programme before about the impact on young people, which, which is very frightening. Um, it comes down, doesn't it, do you think, to this dilemma between jobs, between livelihoods and between saving lives. And we can see that clash illustrated so strongly at the moment between Andy Burnham and other uh, members and leaders and, and some Tory MPs in the Greater Manchester area as well and the government. And we have um, this deadline. We have midday today, a kind of political high noon where... It has to be accepted, those Tier 3 restrictions, the government says, or they're going to be imposed on Greater Manchester. I mean, you have faced some challenging moments in your career, some standoffs. Um, Andy Burnham's on the show in just a moment. What would you say to him about what he should do? Should he stand firm or should he give in? Well, Andy Burnham's a good friend of mine. He's done a, a great uh, job in, in Manchester. He speaks for many people in the north and he's not just speaking now for manchester because we know that 12 million people may be in this tier three within a few days uh, time so we've got to find a way out of this problem and the problem is basically this the government is increasing the health restrictions dramatically but at the same time it's reducing the financial help dramatically as well from november the first the financial help available to areas that are experiencing exactly the same problems that they had in March and April with the lockdowns and restrictions, the financial help is being cut. And really, the Chancellor has got to come to the House of Commons with a new recovery plan. It's now out of date. What he announced a few days ago, which mm -hmm. I said at the time was not enough, is now clearly out of date. And he's got to provide the employment support and the financial help that's necessary. This is a once-in-a-century event. We didn't want it to return, but it is returning as a problem. You can't cut the support available just at the time that the problem gets even greater than it was a few weeks and a well, few no, months but, ago. Th but that is the argument that Addie Burnham and many other people are making. But Boris Johnson, you've been a Prime Minister. A Prime Minister can't publicly give in on something like this, can they? I mean, he has to see through his position. What would be the situation for Boris Johnson? What would you have done in this situation if you were faced with such a public standoff by the opposition party at the core of it? 
you, you'd have to stick it out, wouldn't you? Or would you give in? No. No, in the end, the Prime Minister is responsible for bringing people together. He, he's got to find a way of uniting the country. We've got to put these divisions aside. And you know if you have a lockdown or if you have health restrictions, it depends on consent. So you've got to build a consensus so that people know that the advice they're being given is the advice that they want to follow. And you've got to communicate, you've got to connect, you've got to talk to people, coordinate. And that's what I think is missing at the moment. You've got to somehow have a summit of all the leaders that are concerned about this lockdown, talk to them about what they know what's happening on the ground, find a way forward that is acceptable to all. I don't think there's much disagreement about the need for health restrictions. I think the big disagreement is about whether you can cut the financial support available mm. just at the very moment that you're imposing greater yep. health restrictions. Now, look at it this way. Look at it this way. The minimum wage is £8.70 an hour. What the government is saying is if you're faced in a tier three area with a problem, you're only going to get £5.80 an hour. That means your wages are cut from £300 a week to £200 a week for those on basically the minimum wage. Now, which family can afford a £100 cut in the money that's available for food and for everything that is needed uh, for a family, particularly with children who are in need and are growing up at this time? You can't do this overnight. No responsible government should do this. And I believe that the way around this, and I supported R Richie Sunak when he had his uh, March plan. I, I called for it and I was really welcoming of it. I now think he's got it wrong. I think he's got to review it. He's got to come to the House of Commons with a new plan, and the new plan must con in yeah. contain additional financial support for families in the lockdown. And particularly, of course, as I've said this morning, you've got to give help with work experience, training, job mm -hmm. search, and incentives for employers to take young people on. Otherwise, we are just piling up problems for years to come. It's interesting, isn't it? Because it does come down, you know, when you look back over the years to sort of the ideals of different governments in many ways. I remember, you know, Liverpool decimated, you know, nothing happening up there. And then under a Labour government, this is not a part of the point, but it just happened to be, it was a Labour government, created so many civil service jobs up in Liverpool, which then sort of kick-started the whole economy there. Is there a sort of more creative way that this... And I know that, obviously, a Tory government is not about extending the state, it's about reducing the state, which is ideologically very different to a Labour government. But, you know, in these times of very extraordinary need, you know, is there a time where there should be a sort of... A, a unity between different views, you know, that the state has to... I mean, the, the furlough scheme Absolutely. was something that Labour would have been proud of. I mean, it was extraordinary at the time. But now, in terms of creating jobs for young people, could the government be doing something more where they create more civil services? We heard an idea this young... morning, oh. didn't we? Take over, requisition some hospitality yes. venues, put vulnerable people yeah. um, in there that yeah. could shield safely, particularly if they're in multi-generational household, yes. give work to the hospitality, make use of those buildings. Those sort of sort a creative of way of solving the, trying to solve the problem, but also extending jobs to those who are losing them. Well, you've already put a number of ideas on the table which should now be discussed and we should get together to do so. This is above party politics. This is about a moral case for young people and for others who are faced with their lives being torn apart by unemployment, getting a better chance to make the most of themselves. And so there are jobs. We've got to train people to be carers. Logistics, the, the amount of uh, goods and services that are travelling around the country, we need now to have uh, more people in logistics. We need IT workers. We need contact tracers. All these things are needed. We need to put uh, environment uh, first, and therefore we need a Green New Deal that's creating jobs to improve our local environment. All these things can be done. And because this is a once-in-a-century event, we've got to do what Germany, France, America are doing and not cut off the support at the moment that things are getting worse, but continue the support until we are sure that we can get unemployment uh, down and we can make sure that the economy is able to grow. It's deeply frustrating for all those people who are watching this morning whose, you know, livelihoods are hanging in the balance. And no surprise on the front of the Times, millennials all over the world have lost faith in democracy. And I think that that ultimately is one of the, you know, long-term consequences of young people losing their jobs and not feeling supported.